Recently, I put out a video confirming my information on the RTX 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti pricing and launch. And to be entirely honest, not all of it should have been a surprise to most people. This is something I have been speculating on pretty accurately, I think, in Broken Silicons for a while, and video cards confirmed a lot of what I said in that video before me. But one thing became pretty clear while I was making that video, and it's something that while not new now, is becoming more apparent to me. And that is how NVIDIA is preparing to do a blitz and possibly even what you might think of as an Ampere reboot around AMD's FSR launch, around AMD's DLSS competitor launch that NVIDIA doesn't want most people to realize is now out there. Within the past week, I was tipped off by a couple distributors that I've relied on for accurate information for... I think over a year now when I look at their email chain. Anyways, I won't show the conversation because I do need to be extra careful, I think, with this one to protect their privacy. But I can tell you roughly what was said. And in the next two weeks, I have been told that there will be no stock arriving effectively for existing HHR high hash rate models. That's the existing Ampere models you're aware of that you can mine away on Ethereum like it's nothing. But a few AIBs that I'm not going to say will be introducing gaming cards with an LHR branding literally on them, low hash rate branding, after the stock improves. So basically, they're letting stock of existing models dry up while they prepare to do a full lineup. This is not just 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti, an entire lineup of low hash rate locked models. More interestingly... The official pricing for these LHR cards is supposedly not going to change, but technically, unofficially, they will be allowed to be pushed to lower store shelf prices than the models they are replacing. The only thing we don't know is if the prices will stay lower because, you know, demand is not something everyone can control, nor how much lower the prices will actually be. But, yeah, you guys should see LHR models in a few weeks and these are hardware locked chips that will be allowed to be priced lower by AIBs if, if there is cause to do so. So do you see the significance of this? NVIDIA is letting high hash rate models either dry up in stock or keep commanding a higher price than MSRP, far higher price. And they are pushing new models that they have more control over that are going to be allowed to go down to lower prices if demand starts decreasing incrementally, whether from better supply or from AMD really bringing the heat to NVIDIA, probably a little bit of both. NVIDIA is preparing for incremental improvements in availability right now. I said incremental. I do not expect shortages to be great for a while, but things could start heating up soon. And actually, the extensiveness of these Ethereum mining locks are pretty interesting. It's, it's something that I actually believe Igor's lab has covered extensively, and I recommend you check out a couple articles from him. But at the very least, what I can say is this. The control is there, and... NVIDIA did this somewhat last minute to make sure the entire lineup had these locks, I think after figuring out how well this thing was actually working. And I want to get into that and AMD's FSR, why NVIDIA is threatened by it, but first an ad from a sponsor. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. PCBWay is a full-featured PCB supplier with products ranging from standard to advanced and featuring SMT THT, layout, 3D printing, CNC, and injection molding services, plus much more. PCBs start from $5 for 10 pieces and new members order free. Use the link in the description and if they ask, let them know that MLID sent you to show support for the channel. Now back to the video. All right, so the LHR mining locks. These are, based on what I'm told, far more comprehensive than anything they did before. And they work through throttling applications that leverage CUDA. This is active throttling too, not just a handshake at boot up or a couple times. There is an active hardware monitoring 24 seven when you're running this card. And remember that CUDA is controlled wholly by NVIDIA. They have an iron fist on this and they can really manipulate things. Now I'm told that technically someone could program a miner 
to use OpenCL through Ampere, and it would likely work, at least for now. But as far as I am aware, the most efficient Ethereum miners all are programmed with CUDA and mined, and most mining software is for NVIDIA graphics cards. Of course, they're NVIDIA. So the significance of that, then, is because it's controlled through CUDA, because NVIDIA controls CUDA, this new market can target specific workloads, probably not just Ethereum mining. Right now, that's all I hear it covers, but if a new algorithm pops up, they can make all future drivers limit that too if you want the newest drivers. Oh, and an interesting tidbit, I've been told that if you flash the BIOS of the new LHR cards on old high hash rate cards, they will still work fine, but they have a lower hash rate. If you try to flash the old BIOSes from the high hash rate cards on these new LHR models, it bricks the card. NVIDIA is not doing a software lock now. They actually seem to have put some effort into this, both so they can claim maybe more accurately this time they're trying to help gamers, but also... So they can push mining firms into buying into their like triple, quadruple priced mining cards that are allowed to keep mining. Um, anyways, though, I would also point out that NVIDIA screwing with CUDA performance is nothing new. They did the same when Vega Frontier threatened to be a better prosumer option versus Titan Pascal. Although I am told that this time it is more egregious because then they were basically just holding back optimizations for the Titan and professional apps. This time there's an active limiter in performance. And because of that, there could actually be lawsuits. But, well, that's what I know. That's what I'm allowed to say. Again, check out Igor's reporting on this. He seems to know a lot about what's going on here. We reported on a lot of it first. But what I will then comment on is FSR. Now, the existence and many of the details, like the fact that it will be open source on multiple platforms, are, are not new information on AMD FSR. I'll be 100% honest. When I saw rumblings out there that it would be coming soon, I didn't believe them. Uh, let's put it this way. A couple sources that would normally know about something like this didn't. And if it wasn't for a couple of key sources that I really trust pretty deeply... I wouldn't have said anything about it because if I don't know something about it, I'm not going to talk about it. But I do know a little bit more about FSR, and I will say it now. Yeah, it, it really is coming in about a month, or it should be if everything goes as planned. And I do have this one big juicy quote for you. Developers that have gotten their hands on AMD FSR confirm it's far easier to implement than DLSS. And the image quality is good for the performance boost you get. Support should be there, it is open source, and it isn't worse than just using TAA with a lower resolution. That was something Hardware Unbox demonstrated in DLSS 1.0. In other words, this will not be DLSS 1.0. I'm not going to claim to know anything else but that, and I haven't looked at what anyone else has said about it. But when I heard about FSR supposedly launching sooner than expected, it's confirmed. And it sounds pretty damn Good. Good enough to worry NVIDIA. The last thing I will say is that I'm not going to get on the FSR hype train until AMD proves themselves on it, right? I was skeptical of DLSS 1.0, and I will be skeptical of AMD until AMD proves themselves. But at the very least, it is obvious NVIDIA is worried. And so, yeah, I don't know. The hype train will be here soon anyway, so just get ready for that. And when is that train arriving? Well, I'm told that AMD may tease FSR as early as June 1st. So look for that uh, presentation there. And I expect NVIDIA to announce the 3080 Ti at the exact same time. And then to follow it up shortly with a 3080 Ti launch and a 3070 Ti launch. And then a 3050 Ti launch and all of these things with LHR models and possibly improving prices and availability. NVIDIA is not just doing this for FSR either. When I look at AMD.com, at least in the U.S., I'm seeing some models of products in stock every time I check. Not just the 5800X nobody really wants compared to the other Zen 3 models. Stock is incrementally improving. And so NVIDIA is realizing that they're going to have to deliver some stock to gamers Finally, instead of shipping abnormal amounts to miners, as many websites and me have alleged. And it's not just stock either. It's not just FSR. 
I think the fact that RDNA 2 is already showing it is catching up in ray tracing performance has them worried as well. They can't expect crazy prices forever. They do need to get their cards into the hands of gamers, not just miners soon. And so NVIDIA is preparing to try to drown out AMD's FSR and other improvements with a launch of an LHR reboot of Ampere. And yeah, I, I think the reason they know they need to do this as well is that they need to keep and capture as much gaming market share as they can this year. Because I stand by it, from the sounds of it, NVIDIA has nothing but Ampere. Even if there's an Ampere refresh, Ampere nonetheless cards for at least probably another year, at the very least close to that at a minimum. And that means AMD really could have an RDNA 3 out that has really impressive performance as I detailed before AM NVIDIA can really respond. And if AMD does that, it's going to be a lot of trouble for NVIDIA, so they better capture market share now. I think this summer, at the very least, will be far more interesting to, than this spring when it comes to hardware discussions. And I think 2022 could be a 2020 craziness level year. Hopefully one without world-ending events. But... We'll have to discuss all of that stuff in another video. That is just going to about do it for this one. Remember to subscribe to Moore's Law is Dead and ring the bell button. Share our videos if you enjoy them. We really could use the support. And additionally, remember that if you have the extra money, you can support us on Patreon and get early ad-free access to Broken Silicon and exclusive podcasts like Die Shrink, one coming out right after this video only to patrons discussing the benefits and downsides of the 28 nanometer stagnation that we had for so long before we started innovating on nodes and technology again. That one turned out really well. Look out for it this Friday, guys. And besides that, all I will say is thank you for watching. <laughs>